Good evening and welcome to our Wednesday evening reflections for this, the first of a two part series entitled Picturing the Divine, in which we aim to dig beneath the surface of the very foundations that undergird our faith, to ask probing questions, to challenge and to affirm some of the long held views that many of us have of who God is. The focus for this evening, the power of a picture. A picture, be it painted or sketched or photographed, has the power to enlighten, to evoke emotion, to inspire, to tell a story, to take us back to a moment in time long gone and allow us in some way to relive the same. Think about the significance and the amount of money that is spent on wedding photos, on images that are sometimes displayed at memorial funeral services that speak to those who are gathered in a variety of different ways of the one who is no longer with us. Such is the nature of technology that many of us walk around with a point and shoot camera in our hands, our, our cell phones, snapping up all manner of images. The, the nature of communication seen in so many ways to have shifted to the visual, what we see, what we watch. Perhaps the most profound and influential images are those that come to reside in our mind's eye. Said more succinctly by the American philosopher, the late American philosopher, Dallas Willard, there is no avoiding the fact that we live at the mercy of our ideas. Ideas that have been formed by the things that we have seen and experienced, the words that we have heard and read. We see this demonstrated in and around us in so many different ways. Those who hold superstitious beliefs would rather step aside and walk around a ladder, perhaps running the risk of being hit by a bicycle, than walking underneath the same, or avoiding a black cat altogether. The things that are believed directly determine the behaviour of the respective person. The way in which we conduct ourselves in relation to COVID-19, to vaccinations, to masks, to social distancing is directly linked to what we believe about the same, our perceptions, how we conduct ourselves with others in mind, inextricably linked to how we see them. I received the following advice recently, somewhat tongue in cheek. Don't walk away from a negative person. Run like hell. Whether you perceive someone to be negative, uh, grumpy, whether you perceive them to be um, a, a presence that is threatening or one that is welcoming and embracing, one that is insightful and interesting, often determines how we interact with those people. Whether or not our perceptions are right, our behavior, our words, our thoughts are affected by the same. So I'd like us to come back to Dallas Willard, having left a mid-sentence earlier. There is no avoiding the fact that we live at the mercy of our ideas. He goes on to say this is never more true than with our ideas about God. Those who view God as an impersonal force tend toward a cold, a distant, a vague relationship to him. Perhaps those who view God as, as a disinterested parent, um, one who, who has abandoned us in so many ways, may give our, ourselves to a boundaryless life, uh, a lawless life, so to speak. Those who view God as a 
a heavenly tyrant watching our every move, taking notes where we step too far to the left or too far to the right, threatening us with an eternity away from his goodness, probably lived in many ways with a repressed sense of self, not wanting to give too full expression to that which is experienced, that which is seen and, and felt. Those who, and, and I think this is a predominant one with many of us, those who view God as a type of wish granter, almost as a divine genie, who we come before sometimes almost exclusively to, to alter circumstances that we can't change for ourselves. And so we turn to this divine being to seek a different weather, um, to, to seek more seriously uh, different, different dynamics in relation to our family's well-being. To, to things that we really find ourselves uh, unable to make a meaningful difference to. Moses said to God, Exodus 3, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? Then what shall I tell them? This is the question that I would like us to, to reflect on in this first part of the series. Who is this God that you believe in, that we believe in? If you were asked that question, how would you find yourself responding? In the Christian church, we are given wonderful language to use god is almighty god is gracious god is living god is holy god is love and just like our perceptions in some of the aforementioned incidents don't always strike reality so i believe that there's a question that allows us to cut through some of these words, helpful as they are, but to find out in our heart of hearts what we really believe about who God is. And that is the question that I would like to leave you with this evening. If God were thinking about you now, what would he be thinking for? It is in answering that question that I believe we portray something of uh, the real, the deep sense within us of, of who this God is. If God was thinking about you right now, what would he be thinking? Leaving you with this question and opportunity to reflect on the same we cast our minds in the same breath forward to next week where we'll gather with pencil and rubber in hand in order to highlight, in order to erase, in order to redraw some of the image that we have come to, to hold to and believe in as far as the God of this world, the God of creation, the God of the Christian church is concerned. May you know his blessing this evening and on into this week. In Christ's name. Amen.